if you have good practices and you're looking at what's next, what's next, what's next, and you're incorporating those principles, chances are in terms of if you're in the manufacturing business, it's going to have a smaller pr footprint versus a larger footprint. It's going to be uh, digital versus analog. Um, it's going to be something that kind of moves people and the planet forward. So you have to be able to use less resources. It's not whether you want to, it's a mandate to how do you. So I think the whole approach is that how one uses resources, whether it's because of it's going to be technology-led or because it's going to be lean in terms of lean practices, I think this becomes a challenge of, of you know, how one's going to um, really create value in the future. We've incorporated principles of lean for probably about over a decade, but uh, not only lean manufacture, but the question is how do you operate in terms of lean thinking within your life? You know, how, how do you incorporate these principles which actually have you using less and creating more value for people? So the objective was we wanted to grow the company, and in order to grow the company, we needed talent, and in order to have talent, we wanted top talent. And so I had known Stephen for many years. Um, he was a colleague in the industry, and um, it, it's actually not his gives that's the most impressive thing about him. It's that um, Stephen is uh, Scottish by background, has spent many years understanding and working within the European markets, um, was the youngest executive at Marks, Marks and Spencer, and ran a trading company that then uh, uh, then supported Marks and Spencer. The company was then bought out by uh, Wing Tai, which one of the Asian conglomerates, and which owned Gives and Hawks. And he ran the apparel division of Wing Tai, so know, knows more and, and lived in Hong Kong for the past 20 years. So if we're looking at somebody who brings a global ba uh, global perspective to the to the uh, company. Stephen brings an unmatched global perspective. His knowledge of, you know, European industry and Asian industry and culture, and now to America has been has been phenomenal and a and a real you know plus for us. Stephen Minot came from Avery Dennison. In our industry, there's a 600 pound gorilla, and Avery makes all the interior labels or many of the interior labels for the global brands. And Steve is uh, he's an engineer's engineer. Um, I, I call him the orthopedist because if one gives him a job, he will just crunch it out until that job is complete. He is a remarkable, trusted resource. And between, um, and he's also British. So it's been fun working with uh, uh, two guys and a great team, some of which have funny accents. And, um, you know, again, uh, they're, they're just wonderful, wonderful colleagues. And, and the speed at which we've been able to bring line forward is, you know, the past few years, it's been a rapid clip of change. So we've been producing goods for the NBA, designing and producing goods for the NBA for, for many years. Um, the relationship was with Adidas in terms of uh, who, were the pa who was the past licensee. As the relationship transitions and the licensee becomes Nike, um, we've become the primary producer of identity for the NBA, both on court and the authentic and the the authentic, the promotional, as well as the replica. So what you'll see on, on uh, the NBA jerseys uh, that are Nike is largely Lion products. So we're proud of this. And, and the interesting part was our R&D our team and the, and the jobs that they've done in terms of commercializing new technologies for the NBA. So new types of adhesives, new types of materials, new types of processes. It's, it's really been a phenomenal effort. Um, it's been about a year in the making and we're thrilled that, that uh, Nike selected us to be their partner. In 2013, we were, we were a, a vendor to the primary uh, a company that produces uniforms for the federal government, which is uh, VF Corp. In, in 2013, um, they, there was a contract that was held up, and it was based upon the machinations of, of all that was going on in the world of global sourcing related to um, wars in Afghanistan and, and, and federal procurement. It's interesting because it really, it really suggests how the world works and, and uh, unintended consequences. And so the, th the goods that we produced in the United States at that point were, were insignia for federal government agencies such as Border Patrol. The government decided to um, produce its Border Patrol badges on the other side of the border, which was an interesting decision. And for us, the decision meant that we had people that had worked here for 30, 40 years what to do. And we knew that two things were considerations. One was that we had people that we really genuinely cared about. And the second was we knew that new technology was coming and our objective was to maintain the glue long enough to allow us to then transform domestic operations. But with that going away, we had a choice. Do we shut down domestically forever? 
or do we figure out what's going to be the next generation of things? So we reached out to our old friends, the Girl Scouts, and asked them if they'd consider allowing us to reshore, redesign and reshore products from Asia back to the United States and enter into a collaboration with us um, to do this. We said, what we'll do is we'll use some automation here. We'll use things like textile lasers. and. Um, will retrain people so that the people who are doing these tasks in an analog way can now run equipment and machinery that's digitally based. And they said yes. And um, we opened this facility in January 2015 and it's been wonderful. You know, it's, it's really quite a unique place. We co-located co um, R&D here so that as girls pass through, they can see the new innovations that are done with material science and digital technology and all sorts of things. We created this, this area, which is in essence a living classroom where kids and people can learn all about the next generation of making things. And, um, and I, I, I love this place. Um, and, and more importantly is I love what it represents, which is with a little bit of grit, one can create the next generation of things instead of harping on the last generation of things.